uh, welcome to this particular uh, lab module. In this uh, lab class, uh, the idea is to show you how to dice the wafer. What I mean by that? Uh, uh, you, you now understand that we use uh, entire silicon wafer, right? And uh, once you have the silicon wafer with many sensors, you have to chop off the sensors. So, uh, if you see the screen, uh, if you have silicon wafer, okay, and then you have let us say 3 by 3, 3 rows, 3 columns, sensor chips, right. And finally, this sensor chip may be like let us say pressure sensors, okay. Now, this is your substrate. I cannot use the entire substrate for measuring something, right. I want to dice this off, that means I just want a pressure sensor to be out. So, how to dice it, right. So, we can dice it like this and then we can get a pressure sensor chip like this. Right. So, how our diced wafer uh, under the microscope looks like, we will see the inspection of that. Also, we will look at the uh, CNT sensing layer for fabricated sensor, what does that mean? Let us say, I will just show you in terms of blocks. So, you have a substrate again, right and on the substrate you have uh, a heater, on the heater you have interdigitated electrodes on interdigital electrodes you have a sensing layer, sensing layer. Now, what does this become? This becomes a VOC sensor or gas sensor, right. You have a substrate, a heater, interdigital electrodes and sensing layer. Now, you know that if I change the sensing layer from thin films, from thin films of metal oxide semiconductors to nano structured nano structured metal oxide semiconducting materials like indium tin oxide, zinc oxide, tungsten oxide, tin oxide, right, indium oxide and many more. Then the nano structure also I can use CNT right carbon nanotubes. The nanostructure would show a higher sensitivity at a lower room temperature because it has a higher surface to volume ratio compared to thin films and that is why we go for a sensing layer which is made up of nanostructure materials. So, we will see in this lab that how the carbon nanotube looks like on the wafer which has those sensing layer. Uh, so, CNT is a sensing layer on the wafer which has the interdigitated electrodes. Right. So, this is a lab uh, uh, class and uh, I request my uh, lab assistant uh, actually is a project assistant I am sorry uh, teaching assistant uh, and he is also uh, a part of this particular project Anil uh, to show it to you uh, how this uh, chip looks under the microscope right uh, and I will see in the next class till then you take care bye. Welcome to this module. Uh, uh, as part of the last few modules, uh, we are looking at uh, sensors, uh, several examples of sensors that we have fabricated uh, in our facility and I have shown you like how a glass wafer will be, how a silicon wafer will be, how it will look like after it is deposited with gold and uh, what are the processes uh, that is involved in making microheaters. Uh, I have shown you all those things. Today, uh, uh, what we will do is. I had, uh, we had a glass wafer that was deposited with gold, okay. And uh, I, I have shown it to you in the uh, previous uh, video also. Uh, I will show it to you today as well. And I will show you after patterning how that uh, glass wafer will look like. And uh, this electrode which I am showing, I think you might have seen previously in the course, but I think you might not have seen before and after pictures of the electrodes uh, on the uh, glass wafer. Now the idea is that, uh, I have told you that we are using these sensors for uh, biological applications, right? So, uh, you need to also understand that uh, what is the relevance of several designs uh, in, in, in the context of biology. Like why do we decide to make microheaters in such specific way? Why do we decide to place uh, microheaters in specific way? Uh, what are the design challenges and all? Uh, many part of this I have covered in the previous module. I will further extend that knowledge uh, in this module as well. 
so I have told you uh, that main process that we that are involved will be a photolithography to pattern before that we will do deposition some form of deposition either e beam evaporation or sputter deposition or uh, thermal evaporation and uh, then we will uh, after deposition we will pattern it and then uh, we will etch out the uh, unwanted material from the uh, wafer the wafer or the substrate may be silicon uh, glass or uh, it can be uh, instead of silicon wafer it can be a germanium wafer uh, it can be a pmma substrate it can be glass substrate lot of different varieties of substrates are available uh, now let's i will show you a few of the uh, uh, patterned electrodes on glass here I have uh, two, uh, two wafers, one is a glass wafer which I have shown you in previous modules which is blanket deposited with gold and another one we have patterned with electrode structure. Okay. Now uh, I will show you the electrode structure also under the microscope again uh, so that it becomes very clear to you. Uh, the thing is uh, I am not opening it directly, you should always carry your uh, devices or uh, wafers in wafer carriers for contamination purposes and also for safety of the wafer so that it doesn't break. These are all expensive materials and uh, it should not break. So it should be carried in wafer carriers also all the time. So let me open it for you. So I am opening it, this, this is the wafer which is deposited with gold, I think you can see it. Now I, we have put this uh, protection layer of plastic on top of the glass uh, wafer so that uh, when you close the lid of the wafer carrier nothing happens. So we have I have taken it out. Now this is the glass wafer okay, which is deposited with gold. So we have the wafer uh, deposited with gold in the wafer carrier. Uh, you can uh, handle it with the, with the tweezer. Uh, and if at all you are handling with your hand, make sure that you don't, don't touch the active area of the wafer. So if I am handling with my hand like this, it should always be handled like this. And uh, don't touch anywhere inside the wafer because that will leave your fingerprint mark on the wafer. Okay, now this is a glass wafer that is deposited with gold. There is no patterning done on this. Okay, now I have, I will show you a patterned glass wafer. So this is patterned. You can see it right, the, the gold has been removed from uh, areas uh, where the gold was not required and wherever the device is there, it is there. Now if you see, if you observe, this is a 4 inch glass wafer, okay. Now the, the, the active, the, these are, these, these patterns that you are seeing are the devices, okay. And the devices are, uh, there is a lot of area where around the device which where gold is still there. Why has this happened? This is because we have used, so this is something to do with photolithography, okay. So for photolithography, we need a substrate as you will know with deposited with some material, you will coat that substrate with the photoresist and you need a mask with the pattern design on it and that pattern will be transferred onto the substrate, correct. Now usually for 4 inch substrate, you will need to use a 4 inch mask. Likewise, you can even use a 5 inch mask with 4 inch area in the mask, but uh, we have used a 3 inch mask because we make these designs also on 3 inch glass lights. So on a 4 inch wafer with deposited with gold, we have used a 3 inch mask to pattern this. That is why many of because 3 inch mask will only be this much area. So the remaining portion of the gold will not be patterned because it is not uh, that mask is not covering that area. That is why most of this area of uh, is gold. And this is the active uh, area and we can see the devices here. So uh, we will quickly see these devices under the microscope. Uh, so we ha I have a microscope behind me. Uh, I will quickly load this micro uh, device onto the uh, microscope, okay. Just see me, uh, I will be loading it. Already some devices are there on the microscope. Uh, I will first remove those devices, keep it somewhere else and then load this uh, chip. So this is how you should handle your devices. I have one device in my tweezer. This is something else, I will talk to you about this also. I will remove whatever is already loaded and then keep this electrode. So I have removed it. Now I am transferring the patterned gold electrodes onto the microscope. Now you can see that I have loaded the device onto the microscope. This is the metallurgical microscope. You have covered this in the course before. Now let's look at the, let's start the software to see the image. Let's look at the computer screen. 
So now I'm opening the software. I have to adjust the white balance and auto exposure so that we can see this thing and then I have to go to the right kind of magnification that I need. So what magnification will you use for imaging? That depends on your understanding of your design. Okay. So this design uh, is a, uh, a 10 micron, 20 micron uh, features. So I, I can see the overall structure of the design if I go at 5x uh, lens. That is 5x lens with 10x uh, eyepiece magnification that will be 50x magnification. So let us look at it now. So uh, you can see the scenic computer screen. So I am, I am going to find out the exact active area of the device. So it has come. You can see it. I'll go to another device. So you can see the entire device uh, under the microscope now. So you can see uh, major electrodes here, major electrodes there and you can see fine structures here. Those are the interdigitated electrodes, interdigitated digits like fingers. So fingers are also called digits on your link. This is called index finger. So they are called digits also. So these are like fingers. They are 10 micron width and 10 micron spacing uh, gold electrodes. Okay. So these can act as sensing layers for a multiple purposes. Whatever. So because by default, uh, if nothing is there on, if nothing is there on top of this, this will be an infinite impedance, right? Ideally. So if something, some material, some analyte is kept on top of this electrode, it will cause an electrical connection. That through that electrical connection, we will be able to measure the resistivity of the electrode. So for different biological material, we will have different resistivity. And with the same biological material of different conditions of it, also there will be different resistivity. This can be used as biomarker for detection. That is how this type of, this type of biosensor works. So this is the electrode that we have seen in the glass wafer. Okay. Let me just go to higher magnification. Just keep looking at the screen. I will go to let's say 10x magnification. You can see that the focus has shifted because every time we are changing the objective lens, we have to focus it. Now it is in focus. You can see the interdigitated structure uh, more clearly now, uh, very clearly. Correct? You can see it very clearly. Now let me go to another higher magnification. Let me go to 20x. This is a 20x. I will do further focusing. So at 20x, you can see much more clearly the features of the digits. How rectangular are they? Are they perfectly rectangular? They will not be perfectly rectangular because this is this these electrodes are made using etching process. So slightly at the edges there will be some curvatures. These curvatures will be uh, very clearly visible. We have gone to 20x magnification now. Now you can see the uh, digits of the electrode much more clearly and you can see the features of the electrodes. Uh, how fine are they? The curvature of the electrodes and all you can see. Uh, ideally, these should be very perfectly rectangular design. But uh, the process that we use, we do lithography and then we etch, etch do wet etching process. So wet etching process uh, may not give such sharp features. For that only we go for dry etching. So uh, this is a chemical etching process and uh, that involves uh, some liquids and there will be undercutting. Uh, and uh, the, the etching is most more towards isotropic etching than anisotropic etching. Because of all these factors, you can see some circular features on the electrodes. This you can be very more, more clearly if you go to high, even higher magnification. So if I go to 50x magnification, keep looking at the screen. I have gone to 50x magnification. And I am focusing it. So I have focused it. Here you can see the fine features on the electrode. Uh, that you can see that it is not perfectly straight. There are some roughness which is uh, tolerable because it is it is at very high magnification. At 50x magnification, you are still still able to see that it is reasonably straight. You can see this this structure, this curvature, right? You can see a U shape here, slight U shape here, slight U shape here. These are all at high magnification. You can see it. If I go to even higher magnification, let's say I go to 100x, 100x lengths. You can see much more clear, clearer uh, picture. I'll increase the brightness. So you can see how uh, like the imperfections in the design you can see. See here, some material is gone, some here material is gone, which are okay for our sensing purposes. So I can go to the other uh, structure also, that U-shaped structure.
see the u shape you can see it is supposed to be perfectly rectangular you can see a uh, uh, the edges are actually curved this is because of the isotropic nature of the etching process that we do which is fine for our sensing application so you can see that at 5x magnification it looks a bit more perfect than when we go to this is this is basically sensor inspection you are inspecting how your etching profile has been uh, how your design has finally how the design that you have made in the mask how it has been transferred to the substrate uh, so that's how you do inspection by going to higher and higher magnifications okay so next we will do we will see one one sensor that we have made on silicon wafer Previously, we saw uh, gold patterning on glass substrate. Uh, we saw a glass substrate that was blanket deposited with gold. Then we saw a patterned uh, glass substrate with gold uh, gold electrodes. We saw it under the microscope. We saw how the features are uh, visible as we go at higher magnifications. Okay. Now I will show you another design uh, which we have made on a silicon wafer. Uh, on the silicon wafer, we have uh, deposited platinum, and we have used lift-off process to uh, make the features. Why we have used lift-off process? So generally people go for lift-off process uh, when uh, there are no clear, very uh, practically usable etchants available for the deposited material. Let us say when you have when you take gold, uh, you have good etchants which give you uh, uh, controllable etcher rates uh, in, the, in a wet bench. Uh, so you can use for, uh, you can use direct etching process. But platinum, uh, some people use aqua regia and all but that etcher rate is extremely high. You will not be able to preserve your features. So for that people use lift off process, I think lift off process has been covered in the uh, lecture uh, course before, I will not go into details of it. The basic idea is that before you deposit the uh, material that is platinum itself you do lithography after coating photoresist uh, onto your substrate you do lithography pattern transfer onto your substrate and then on the patterned substrate you transfer your, uh, you deposit your material in this case platinum and then you uh, do the lift off process. The idea is uh, the photoresist will come out by and while it comes out it will take away uh, the material platinum from places where it is not required that is the overall idea of uh, uh, overall idea of uh, lift off uh, an analogy is like uh, let's say you have put some things on a bed sheet and you want to remove that item you pull the bed sheet and the item comes with the bed sheet so it's something like that uh, just that it's not exactly a bed sheet because if it's a bed sheet it will be a blanket removal so if you just simply remove the pr a whole platinum layer on top of it will come out but because you are developing the pr some part of it can be taken out and some part will remain and the uh, for and the platinum can be preserved with the features now uh, we have a uh, i will show you the substrate that has been patterned through lift off technique and diced as well so dyes using a uh, wafer dicing machine uh, so that that way because you will not be able to see the uh, you will not be seeing the uh, uh, you will not be seeing the devices in a full silicon wafer but it is a diced silicon wafer so you can see it under the microscope so under the uh, camera so this is this was part of a whole silicon wafer okay but what we did these are individual chips you can see we have diced this wafer and uh, with dicing is done using an automatic dicing machine that is available in the institute and uh, we give the pitch and spacing of the device uh, of the devices and that machine will go around making x and y lines on your wafer uh, it's a, a very sharp tip uh, dicer and it will make these lines on the wafer and the devices will come out you can see these dice, dicing lines on the wafer now this is a specific special design uh, where that incorporates micro heaters, uh, temperature resistance temperature devices, electrodes, uh, isolation trenches, a lot of things on this device. Uh, I will not go into the application of it because it is still uh, under research but I can show you the design as such. And uh, for dicing we keep the wafer on a sticky um, paper uh, so that it can be diced by the machine that is why I can take it like this. Uh, the devices are on it and uh, the devices you can see you can take it out from the sticky paper, sticky material and uh, the material will be diced and we can take it out. Now I have removed, uh, so this is the wafer okay, wafer with the platinum electrodes and uh, the dev devices have been diced. Now from this wafer I have taken out one, one device. So that one device is in my uh, tweezer here. You can see it in this, this is one device. We can see this device under the microscope, then I will explain to you what is it about. 
So uh, we, ha we have seen the uh, L um, sensors on the substrate, right? Now I have taken one such sensor and I am holding it with my tweezer, tweezer here. You can see it, right, in my hand. This is the size of one sensor, okay? Now let's look at the sensor under, under the microscope. So I am keeping it under the microscope. You can see the microscope behind next to me. I am keeping it under the microscope. We will look at it under 5x optical magnification, okay? So let's look at the screen. I'll focus it. Now, let's see the sensor. So you can see the sensor now on the screen very clearly. Correct? Now, if you see uh, the major part, 80 to 90 percent of the sensor are contact pads. The active area of the sensor is very, very, very small. It's only 0.5 mm by 1 mm, okay? Which is what you are seeing in the screen. At the center, you can see a circular structure which is a microheater. Around that microheater, you can see interdigitated electrodes in a circular fashion. Around that, you can see a dark ring-like structure, correct? The dark ring-like structure is actually a trench or a, a deep a hole that has been made for thermal isolation. Around this trench, you can see three structures, right? Three winding structures. These three winding structures are again resistance temperature devices. What are resistance temperature devices? Resistance temperature devices are also like microheaters, but the thing, the difference is that they are not actively heated. That means they only respond to a change in temperature to which they are exposed to. They are themselves not heated to a particular temperature. So resistance temperature devices change their resistance as uh, uh, heat is impinged on them. That's the idea. The, the, so the idea is that you heat the microheater to a particular temperature, you put a sample on top of the sensor and that through the microheater that temperature will spread right and that change in spread through the sample will be detected by RTDs. That is the general idea about the working of the sensor. And there are a lot of applications which we are not uh, allowed to divulge. So this is how you make a sensor design. So you can see that this, this, uh, this sensor has uh, electrical properties, uh, thermal properties, uh, a lot of properties also uh, included uh, in the design which can be measured. Okay, so this is one design. You can see that bigger uh, metal parts that are going out are uh, actually uh, the for the contacts for the pads. They eventually end up with pads. We can I can show you the pads also. If I go towards the right, I keep going. You can see that the, this that width will keep on increasing and it will end up in pads. These are pads. This is the edge of the pad. Okay, and the dark edge, that rough edge, is the edge of the sensor. This white thing is the pad, pad of each of the connections. And what you saw at the center is the active area. It's called the active area of the sensor. So you have seen how the sensor structure is. How, uh, so let's, uh, let's come back. So you have seen how the sensor structure is. So we have seen uh, how silicon wafer, uh, which is 500 micrometer in thickness can be diced how uh, platinum uh, material can be deposited uh, on top of the sensor and how it will be diced and uh, what, what is the process that you use if you have a material for which you don't have an etching etchant, proper etchant which can give you controllable etch rates, uh, what is the alternate process that you can go for uh, which is lift off that we have seen. We have shown you how we have made a sensor with platinum using lift off technique, how the uh, process was done, how uh, that wafer was diced using an automatic dicing machine. We, did not, we don't have that machine in our premises so we just spoke to you about that. Then how it will be stuck onto a sticky material and then you, you saw the dicing line on the uh, substrate. Then I took out one such wafer, one such sensor. I showed you that sensor uh, in my tweezer and we, sh we, sh we looked at it under the microscope also and saw how the functionally it might be useful for any uh, sensing applications. Okay. Now uh, another example that we have is you might have seen the sensor during this course of this project, uh, course of this uh, uh, NPTEL course. Uh, it's a small, it's a very simple microheater structure that we have. I have here with me a lot of microheaters okay, on this wafer. I have a lot of microheaters on this wafer. Okay. One such microheater, let me take it in my tweezer. It's very small microheater. It's literally micro. So I have it in my tweezer. I don't think, I don't know if you can see it. This is the size of the microheater, okay, and there that at the top and bottom you have contact pads for the microheater and it's a winding structure. Now how do you handle such things to make intelligent systems? So for that, 
how do you handle such things to make intelligent systems so for that you need to use a technique called wire bounding okay so you can you can increase the uh, uh, area that you have to work with by bonding these contacts of the sensors onto a pcb kind of structure using a technique called wire bonding and then you can take the contact bags from there i will show you the same sensor that has been wire bonded onto a substrate so in my hand let's uh, look at it in close in my hand i have these sensors which you can see and their contacts have been wire bonded onto these pads and these pads can be taken from here so now it is very easy to solder onto it this is like a pcb this is a pcb only from the sensor we have wire bonded onto the pcb and we can take out from the pcb see this is part of packaging it's called mems packaging so we have packaged the sensor in a way that it can be used into a, into another further or upstream or downstream electronic circuit otherwise it is very difficult if you don't package it it will be difficult to interface it with a downstream or upstream electronic circuits so that is the importance of packaging so that's how the small sensor we have uh, made it in a size that is handleable in our hand and we can interface with the bigger electronic circuits that we might have, we might be having so this is one uh, system one uh, one of the methods that are used for mems device uh, to make systems out of it so packaging is a very important aspect of that so that's what we saw now now another sensor that we can have is again electrodes but the size and dimensions are different just wait a second let me close this up and then we can see the next sensor now uh, it's a similar structure as compared to what we saw for the platinum electrodes these electrodes are also platinum based but these are used for gas sensing applications you can see the sensor in my hand here you can see a bright spot a yellow, white color spot at the center right that is because it has been coated with an active material for sensing applications and underneath this active material you have electrodes so let's look at this also under the microscope uh, i have kept it in the microscope so this is an electrode on top of which we have a sensing layer okay uh, so let's look at this computer screen so you can see the computer screen it's very difficult to see you can just see it so you can see the mice mouse pointer on the screen so you can see the mouse pointer so you can see that underneath this is a lot of noise right lot of it looks like some dirty thing but it's not actually dirty it's the sensing material which is carbon nanotubes so if you have to see these carbon nanotubes properly you have to go for scm imaging not optical optical imaging but underneath this nanotube you can see this electrode structure here below you can if you look closely you can see the electrode structure so on top of the electrode here on top of the electrode we have coated with carbon nanotubes so this will act as a sensing layer so if some material comes and interacts with the carbon nanotube it will change the impedance of the underlying electrode and that can be used for sensing so this is a course in sensors and actuators that's why i am i am making you through different different inter interesting types of sensors and how they can be actuated in uh, real life real world situations so this is one type of uh, sensor that can be used okay so in the past several modules uh, short short modules we have seen different types of sensors uh, different types of materials different types of processes different types of substrates gold subst uh, glass substrate silicon substrate gold material platinum material etching process lithography process lift off process a uh, lot of things we have seen sensing materials carbon nanotubes uh, i have introduced you to all these things now as the next step what we will do is we will see uh, these actually these sensors have to talk to real world systems right so how do you so let's say if i take a sensor that can measure properties of a material how do you prepare the material so that uh, it can measure from the sensor so one such material that we use are tissues from patients so how can we uh, how do we prepare the tissue so that it can be used to measure with the sensor so in the next module uh, we will look at how tissues can be departed the paraffinization is a process which i will introduce to you in the next module and we'll see how tissues can be prepared uh, after they have been taken from the patient and preserved for a long term preservation such from such samples from long term preserved samples how can you take out tissues and how can you process them and condition them so that they can be used for measurement with a sensor so that will be next module hope you are finding all these modules interesting uh, thank you see you next time